Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the sports betting show hosted by a real statistics professor. Cousin Jared, uh, you missed the all total show yesterday. Uh, you know what? Uh, my, I have left my mark. If, if nothing else good come, comes in the world, um, I, I have made my mark here. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy. There you go. So somebody, we talked, talked about this in the comments on yesterday's show. My, my last name actually decides, we joke that you should be cousin totals. Uh, yeah. That is, fortunately yeah. is not your last name. Uh, no. The, uh, no. You know, your ancestors did not. Because back in the day, I guess you could choose your own last name, right? And I guess your ancestors did oh. not decide to change your last name to totals, unfortunately. Or no. else this would have worked out really well. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know how my ancestors would feel, but I feel like I have a spouse that would not be behind uh, with the last name of turtles. That's probably true. She probably would be like, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the uh, recap here for Thursday. Because uh, your Thursday went well. The five picks that I highlighted that I liked the most, mm -hmm. all won. And, and I feel like when you have a day like that, you're just like, what do you say? You know? Yeah. I, well, and I mean, are we, don't get me wrong. This isn't going to last forever, but I mean, are we surprised at this point with like how no, the past month be. or six yeah. weeks or whatever have gone? Uh, it's just continuing to roll. I mean, it will come back. We will come yeah. back to earth at some point. It's, it's just, although, although, and I would get always this, we said that about NFL all last season and it mm -hmm. just like stayed at like a 20% ROI for like the whole season, which yeah. was just bonkers. Yeah. 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 Uh, Who knows? Those, those are the five picks that I highlighted. Play the day one, the extra credit pick over on Twitter and all the other socials. Won the three A grades, won the model. Uh, you know, did pretty well, did pretty, pretty well itself. Uh, as well, just continues to, to truck along. We're getting a decent sample size here. Uh, it, it's obviously, you know, statistical sample size is a whole other rabbit hole that we actually discussed this morning on, on Discord. Uh, <laughs> and it's not quite as straightforward as, as people might want to make it be, but if anything else, that's a, it's a lot of units there. And, and I made the comment there, and I'll, and I'll just say here, you know, the most work has gone into the full game sides, and you can see how well that that's doing so i'm pleased uh, as the uh, creator of this that you know the last uh you know six weeks or so we're up 28 units which is just insane uh, yeah. how, how good that's been and 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 I, and I mentioned this before uh i think there was just an issue with how i uh, i rebuilt the system this summer to handle injuries a little bit differently and i changed sources of rosters and, and i just don't think the bullpens i don't think the rosters were right i, I checked on a couple teams at one point and some of the better relievers like weren't even listed in my database. And so I think I just got some wires crossed there with bullpens. And so I think now that we're, now that we're rolling with that, it's, it's, it's doing well. Uh, if you want all those picks, Doug Club's the place to be. Discord chat is a lot of fun uh, where we hang out and, and, and get good laughs and continue to roll in the WNBA picks as well for the people who know what they're doing on that. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of details, projections, totals, run lines, reverse run lines, picks, links, all you can imagine over on Doug Club link in the show description or that QR code will take you there. Quick reminder, sure, picks professor.com slash new will get you information about the community and more information about the models. They are player-based models, so the ratings will reflect the current roster. And so if you see a team who has done better or worse this season but isn't completely healthy, that might explain why. The average grade is 100. Higher implies more runs, so you don't want to be high if you are a pitcher, but you do for hitting. We are projecting an average game. We have no idea what will happen in one game. So when we say 55%, what that means is we do expect that pick to lose 9 out of 20 times. It's not quite that simple with totals because uh, the distribution is a little bit different, but rest assured the math there is going on in the background for that. And it's the same concept. We do not expect to win every pick. We like it when it happens. The fun five and the Thursday is great, uh, but we do understand we will lose sometimes. And that's okay because if we have a good model, which we do, then we know what prices to bet in order to profit us in the long run. That's what we've been doing here for years at this point, And we continue to, of course, those always take what you like and leave the rest. Last but not least, if you could like the show, we would like that. So we'll start off here. The Marlins and the Nats, cousin Jared, uh, with your Nats hat, me with the Marlins gear on, four hundred five PM Eastern. What Marlins other gear. show gives you this Marlins exactly. and Nationals gear? Uh, probably the ones that cover every game. But I, I've looked around, and the shows that cover every game, you know, we we've done it at times. Mm -hmm. It's like an hour long show because we want to actually give you real insight and maybe some fun laughs, and you get to smile a little bit at our on our banter. Mm -hmm. But I've seen some of these shows who 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 cover every game in like fifteen minutes, and I'm like. You can't even say anything if you're covering a game in 45 seconds. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. You know, Marlins and Nets, not really the, the best game of the day Saturday. It'll be warm in Washington, uh, mid-80s. Wind will be blowing in about 10 miles an hour, so that'll help decrease a little bit. But it is a hitter-friendly ballpark. It is a warm day. And these starting pitchers aren't great. Trevor Rogers, 537 ERA, not that bad, though. Exit before 440 is closer to league average. DJ Hers, a prospect for the Nationals, 648 ERA. Folks, that's in two starts. I would take too much from it. His underlying metrics aren't great. He's not great with regards to the projection. He is young. Most, most young pitchers coming up 
aren't so we don't think he's going to be great but it's not going to be as bad as at era because you know it's just two starts so i wouldn't worry about that too much subpar starting pitching but everything else other than the starting pitching in the park lead us to think the under that's the relievers and the offenses these relievers are solid the way the model is built is to kind of say if the starting pitcher is weaker but you've got good arms behind them and good depth arms behind them then the manager is a little bit easier to go ahead, give them the hook, get the bullpen. In. And that's what the model's thinking will happen here. That if these starting pitchers struggle, the relievers that come behind them aren't that bad. And these offenses are bad. Both of them are bottom five. They're not quite Rockies, White Sox. Uh, you know, there's the other two, but these are the two of the bottom four. I think the other two being Rockies, White Sox. They're not good. Uh, the, the Nets maybe score some, a few runs just like the Rockies because of their park being hitter friendly. Uh, but otherwise, there's just not a lot happening here offensively. We like the under nine. I'm not playing this at eight and a half. It's nine. Even if it's got a little bit of juice, minus 122 is the price right now. Obviously, we don't want to play under nine at like minus 140 or something. But the push protection on nine matters. We're projecting 8.1 runs. And so we think the most likely outcome is eight. The next two most likely outcomes are seven and nine. And so in that situation, we win two of those, push the other one. Cousin Jared, I feel like this is a game where one of these teams is going to score one or two runs. We just have the other team doesn't accidentally score nine or ten themselves. What's your take? Yeah, yeah. so I would say it's not very often that you get a game that involves two bottom four offenses, mm -hmm. which is, is what you have here. And you mentioned that that Rogers' underlying metrics may be uh, not quite as bad as his performance so far this year if you're just looking at ERA and everything. Um, the other thing that I would – say here is um you know we don't talk about we talk about key numbers all the time here it's just the discrepancy in key numbers for totals um are, are vastly different than what they are in like college football or nfl you know there's lots of different key numbers there here it's really 789 uh is kind of the the big ones and so when you can get a number like nine there's a reason that this number is juiced it's because it is important and so i think this is a, an example of yeah, you may not feel super comfortable with this one just because you have two not great starting pitchers going, but you really just need to like try to set that aside. Look at how bad the two offenses are and look that you're getting, you know, one of the best possible numbers that you could. And to your point of what you just said, uh, two of the most common outcomes you win and you still push at, at the other one. So uh, even if you had to go to like for me personally, if you had to go to like minus 125, minus 130 to play the under nine, I would still do that as opposed to like eight and a half or something like that. Um, you mentioned it at the beginning. Nine. Very, very important aspect of this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't want to go too long on this, mainly because I've got a ticking time bomb child who's going to want some food here in just a second. But uh, I, I would be remiss if I did not point out uh, in this situation that, you know, when we talk about key numbers, um, you know, there there is obviously the possibility of you know, uh, uh, runaway games in one direction or the other. And so that's why we always talk about the the outlier games. We just kind of say whatever, uh, you know, that sort of thing that, that that can happen. We talk about the average occurrence and the typical occurrence because while we know that doesn't always happen, we know that that's going to happen enough Mm. to help us you know slow and steady profit on this and that's kind of what we're seeing here is that these offense like so you don't get an, a, an opportunity uh to back two of the uh you know bottom five bottom four offenses yeah. in, in and under and so it makes a lot of sense here to go under nine i'm with you minus 125 maybe up to minus 130 uh is pretty reasonable much better than under eight and a half because nine of course could happen uh but as always folks shop around make sure that you do have multiple books in your portfolio because some books will offer this at eight and a half with the plus odds and i don't want to say that books ever are baiting people know people talk about that like they're daring you or whatever and that sort of thing and we use some of this language they aren't trying to sucker you into something what they're trying to do is manage their portfolio and figure out how to not end up with all the money on one side and then that side have to pay out right so mm. sometimes they will do certain things like that where they'll put it at nine like this uh they'll, they'll put it at nine like this with the, you, you know, at this point you get plus 102 on the over and, and mm -hmm. they're kind of daring you, right. To say, oh, well take that over. It's bad pitching and look at the odds or whatever. It's not so much that there's anything nefarious happening there. It's, it's, they're just trying to figure out how to balance the books. And so the juice uh -huh. isn't sexy, but in this case, it's a smarter pick to lay the juice here rather than go eight and a half. Some books are going to offer both. So that's why you want to have multiple books in your account. If you don't have an account, yet bet us is a great place to be link in the show description 125 percent bonus on your first ever three deposits up to two thousand dollars each
BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. I'm also going to cover one more game here at this 4 o'clock Eastern start. Tigers and the Astros. Jack Flaherty and Justin Verlander will take place in the air conditioning of Minute Maid Park. So if you want to be in Houston, Flaherty has been fantastic this year. We've talked about it a couple of times this season. I swear one of the top five pitchers in baseball and bottom five pitchers in baseball. He's been back and forth a few times, it seems like. Right now he's up to number 17. He's having a fantastic season, revitalizing his career now. 322 ERA, 271 FIP, 210 X FIP. The underlying metrics support what he is doing. Now the rating's a little bit slow because it doesn't want to overreact, but if he continues to pitch this way, he'll be in the top 10 soon enough. Back to his glory days when he was with the Cardinals and people were you know, drafting him as one of the top fantasy pitchers uh, you know, out there. Fantastic. Fantastic pitcher right now for the Tigers. Verlander, unfortunately, as Astros fans that we are, the opposite, down to a 108 grade. I cannot believe it. But even from the very start, we talked about this. We were worried a little bit about the age, when that would come for him. His ERA is hanging in there at 395. He does know how to pitch. So he can, you know, does have a little bit of uh, abilities in tighter spots to be more crafty because he's a veteran. Absolutely. But you cannot ignore the underlying metrics. 497 FIP, 478 X FIP. It's just like it's not there. His command isn't there. The velocity being down a little bit more. He's just not the same guy. We knew it would come. Unfortunately, if, again, for us Astros fans, it's sad that it's here. The Tigers have a massive edge at starting pitching. Now, the Astros have a better offense. I have very little faith in this Tigers offense. And I do think the Astros relievers are better than the Tigers relievers. have been down on them from the start. Even when they had a nice ERA, I told y'all, it was smoke and mirrors. So really the biggest issue for the Astros is Verlander not being – Great. Now, now here's the, the, the caveat here with the Astros bullpen. They get a good grade. Why is that? Because Hayter is really good, and he's been a little bit up and down this year, but he's had a great career. Mm-hmm. Presley, I still have no faith in. He's the one guy in there that just really struggles. They got a couple other guys doing well, but they don't quite have the depth they had before. If Verlander's mm-hmm. not able to give them six, and I don't really have any faith in that, the Astros might be in trouble here. This is pretty close to a coin toss type game. The model says the Astros win 52% of the time. So we lean Astros. They are at home. But at plus 123, the Tigers offer a lot of value. The threshold for this being a good pick is plus 121. According to the model, I would say plus 120 is fine. Plus 120 or better, the Tigers offers us good value in what's pretty close to a coin toss. Cousin Jared, we faded Verlander a lot this year, whether it's picking against him or taking the overs. It's mostly worked out for us, sadly. And if you've been backing Jack Flaherty, you've made a lot of money. This is the intersection yeah. of those two. It's hard to disagree with this. Even though the Astros might win, this is a great price. I'm surprised the books haven't adjusted yet. Yeah, and I, and I feel like this may partially be uh, the, the the public, which, you know, probably not the people watching this show, uh, but the general public probably would think the statistics for these two players are reversed. If you were to put them, uh, you know, in front of them, they would probably think that Flaherty was Verlander and, and vice versa. Um, yeah. To your point, Verlander has, has always had a little bit of an issue with, with giving up home runs, but made up for it by a lot of times those were solo shots because he wasn't yep. walking people. He had the ability to strike out a lot of people. Strikeouts are down, walks are up. Um, it's just, and I mean, that's, that's nothing against him. Uh, I mean, he's 59 years old, uh, Hall of career first ballot hands down. Right? Yes. It yes. doesn't matter what he does at this point going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah exactly. You lose it a little bit with the age, right? I mean, yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and the other thing I would say, but you kind of touched on the relievers here. Um, if you take away the Astros, like top relievers, like their top couple, their bullpen grade really comes down. Uh, yeah. because you know, I would say the rest of the bullpen just middling, uh, so I, I think it has to be a very specific situation for the Astros to get those good bullpen arms into the game. I'll go back to with the Astros here that it, to me, it's been the story of the season. If they don't get a very solid starting pitching performance, that's kind of the death knell, um, for them. They have a really difficult time if they can't, you know, come out ahead early or get really solid, solid start from their starting pitching. And I just don't know if Verlander is going to do that. And I'll look on the other side and see Flaherty and just like, yeah, he's probably going to give them five or six good innings for the Tigers. Um, so I, I think I would, I would have thought this game would have been closer to a pick them uh, more so than plus 121 for the Tigers. I, I or 123. I, I think this is 
really good uh, value on the Tigers here, just because I think this is going to be a, a, a toss up, much better pitching, starting pitching for the Tigers uh, against a better offense for the Astros. Yeah. And the Astros offense, of course, uh, you know, still, still pretty solid, but the way Flaherty's pitched, I mean, you, you have to love that. Yeah. Cause Jared, it, it feels like this is probably not gonna be the last time, but you've got a starting pitcher facing Justin Verlander, who according to sideline is almost two standard conditions better. I, I just, it's hard to really wrap the brain around that with how good consistently good Verlander has been for his whole career. Uh, yeah. I think, I think the end is, is, is near for him for being a great pitcher. That doesn't mean he can't be a respectable pitcher, yeah, yeah, uh, but, yeah. but, but uh, you know, the Astros offense can struggle against really elite pitching as any offense can. And that's really what Flaherty's done this year. Don't know who wins, but plus plus one twenty three. I'm like you, I expected this to be more like Tigers plus plus one ten, and me stare at it. Be like, eh, yeah, there's probably some value, but it's like not enough that I'm excited about. This is like yeah. man, some really good value here that it's hard to pass yep. up. Yep, I agree. We will wrap up with Yankees and Red Sox. Uh, Jake and I covered this game yesterday, so Cousin Jared, you can kind of give your spin on it since it's a pretty similar setup here. Uh, Fenway Park being a very hitter-friendly ballpark here. The weather is not overly conducive for anything, but as we mentioned yesterday, the – uh, weather matters a little bit less in Fenway than some of the other parks, just because it's not really built off home runs. It's not like Wrigley, where you know the wind and the uh, you know can knock every ball down, and Wrigley can have games that have you know two runs or seventeen, and you're not and you're not surprised based off the weather. Fenway's just more about a weird park dimension, weird singles and doubles happening yeah. uh, because of because of that park, and so we we always expect a decent amount of runs. The Red Sox offense, uh, as Jake had mentioned, kind of going on the right direction, getting a little more healthy now, uh, grade a little bit better here. The Yankees offense has been fantastic all season. Uh, relievers are very okay. Starting pitching, okay. Nothing special about them. Radon, one of many pitchers, in the, and this is why if you if you bet baseball every day and want to know more about these things, over on Dub Club, you can see all of this for every single game. There's a handful of pitchers that were consistently saying, this is smoke and mirrors. I don't think this is real. And about 80 to 90% of those will work out where what we're saying on that is predictive and will true. It doesn't hold for every single one of them, but Rodon is one of those guys that his ERA is slightly below three, but a fit before 10, exit before 30 is not good. We do not expect him to continue with that low ERA if he continues to pitch like this. I think he's okay. I just don't think he's as good as his ERA. I think it's misleading. Cooper Criswell, nothing special. Decent underlying metrics, but again, just a kind of a run-of-the-mill pitcher. Run-of-the-mill pitchers in Fenway against the Yankees offense, you kind of expect to give up some runs. We're going to go over nine. This is another one, just like we talked about for Friday's game. I think it should be nine and a half. It doesn't mean it won't be a two-to-one game. Anything can happen in one game, but in general, this should be nine and a half, and then you should look at it and say, ah, it's Fenway, Yankees offense. Like, this game could have 13 runs, but like going over nine and a half is always a tall task unless it's mm -hmm. the right situation. Overnight at minus 115 offers us a lot of value because Jared, what's your take? And I, the other thing I would say about the Red Sox here, we I, we talked about them sometime uh, recently when I was on the show. The offense was much worse. I would say that day starting against, uh, going against right-hander, today going against a left-hander. Uh, so just a reminder to, to point out to, to those – consuming the show here. Uh, that's something the sideline keeps track of. How good is your offense versus a right-hander? How good is your offense versus a, a left-hander here? So uh, obviously Red Sox do a little bit better against left-handed started pitching as a number 13 offense uh, higher than I would have, would have expected there. Um, so I think this Yankees offense is really good. Uh, and I, you know, I know I'm not breaking any news there. I feel like the past couple of years of the Yankees, you've always been able to find something with them to be like, oh, are they really going to be a contender or they've underachieved during the regular season? This is the first time in, in a few years. And I know that we've mentioned this before. It's more fun when the Yankees are good. And, um, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, I think the Yankees are good. And so I, I just have a hard time seeing really at this point, almost any team and any starting pitcher being able to keep the offense for the Yankees down. And especially when you talked about all the funky things that can happen at Fenway, where you have fly balls turn into singles and doubles and doubles into the right center gap turn into triples. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, this is just ripe for the Yankees to put up enough runs and definitely the Red Sox offense is good enough to get, uh, do their part to get us over nine here. It's just, it's almost like the opposite of the Nats Marlins, where in that game, you're like, these offenses are terrible. Like, someone's probably going to score, but like, are both of them going to score? And this one, you look at it and you're like, in that park, like, the Yankees are going to get theirs. We don't need that much from the Red Sox in order right. to get us at least through the window and again, that push protection on nine. So valuable both for the over and the under. And that's why we always talk about numbers like seven and nine. And then you just talk about the six and a half, seven, going over seven and a half, a little bit tougher. You'd rather go over seven, right? Going under six and a half, a little tougher. Going yeah. Uh, 
over nine and a half, a little tougher. And so we kind of talk about those key numbers, not like you said, as much as football, uh, yep. but they can really matter here. And again, one-offs, one game, we don't know what will happen. We're talking about long-term value here. And that's what we have uh, shown by the, you know, kind of slow and I would say slow and steady, moderately fast and steady profits we've had <laughs> over the last um, month or so uh, that we've had. And so that's why we like this over nine. Again, I really think it should be nine and a half here for the Saturday night game. That's all I've got. Again, join us on Dub Club here for all the picks on Sunday, all the picks on every single game, all the leans. We have leans or and or picks on every total, uh, every side, every first five total, every first five side on every single game. Updates as starting pitchers change. So many benefits over there on Dub Club. Check that out today. Again, you will invest a little bit, but you will make it back in no time with how well baseball is going. Otherwise, uh, Cousin Jared, do you have any parting words as you take us out for the weekend? I survived a 12-hour drive yesterday with two children under the age of five. I deserve I mean, an award. A, you do. At least a medal. At minimum, maybe, yeah. maybe a plaque. Maybe we should like make a little like certificate you can hang it behind yeah. you. You know, and that Yeah. Kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, the it's children, yeah, the children were were great. No, no complaints. Um, I all it was so good. Like I almost don't want to do it again. Like we're a perfect batting one thousand. Yeah, I just want to yeah. call it done. No you, more. You don't want to ever. You don't want to. You don't want to ruin the memories. Um, no, no. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, I, I don't know if you were if any if, if you you know have kids or have had kids or whatever. But uh, of course they. There's a little talk about screen time with kids and all these different you know debates over that or whatever. Without getting into that, I, I will just point out I feel like. Uh, Mrs. Professor and I really gave into the screen time thing on flights with our daughter. We were mm. like, you know what? Mm. Don't really care. Like you, we're on this plane. We're trapped. You can't go anywhere. You have to sit down. If you yeah. watching this iPad is going to make you happy, do yeah. not care. And like that was like the, yeah. <laughs> we were just there were no rules. Yeah, <laughs> at that yeah. point. Because hey. what are you you're screaming, Todd? Like what are you going to do? Yeah, on the airplane? yeah, yeah. No, there, there. Let's put it this way: there were rules on the way there. There were no rules on the way back. Oh, <laughs> is, is what I would say. Uh, oh, and so, yeah, on the way back, it was just, hey, whatever it takes to get us. Whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, again, viewers, as always, we do thank you for watching. No show for the Sunday games. We'll be back next week. As always, we wish you the best of luck this weekend in all of your betting endeavors. If you're looking for more, come check us out on Dub Club. Otherwise, though, as always, remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money. <laughs>